Peace and love, black family. This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism, Dr. Umar Johnson, coming to you live and direct from Tokyo, Japan, day two. I'm going to get ready to go out and do some sightseeing. Me and the good hostess, I'm going to go visit some of the Buddhist temples. I'm a big fan of Black Buddha, who was an African, whom I consider to be the greatest psychologist of all time. Shout out to Philadelphia, the hometown, West Philly, Stand Up, North Philly, South Philly, Southwest Philly, Germantown, Mount Airy, East Oak Lane, West Oak Lane. Shout out to the whole Philly. All right, family, today is the 92nd Memorial Earth Day of the Honorable Malcolm X, El Hajj, Malik El Shabazz. And I just want to give out a big shout out to the great ancestor Malcolm X, El Hajj, Malik El Shabazz, for putting in the work that he did on behalf of African people. You all know the story. Unfortunately, his life was cut short by a group of jealous idiots in collaboration with the United States government. But be that as it may, we want to let the great ancestor know and we want his family to know who are still living, his daughters, grandchildren, that we will never forget the sacrifice that your father and grandfather offered on behalf of African people. I often consider El Hajj Malik El Shabazz the greatest since Garvey in these United States. I consider Brother Malcolm the greatest since Garvey in these United States. The last year of his life, he tried to redirect it into the more appropriate revolutionary Pan-African nationalist agenda. He met with various heads of state in Africa, started the organization of Afro-American unity patterned after the African Union, which was patterned after the dream of the Honorable Marcus Masai Garvey to give us a United States of Africa. So we definitely want to say rest in peace to our Hajj Malik El Shabazz. And in honor of Brother Malcolm, while I am here in Japan, in Tokyo, I want to formally announce that we will, yes, brothers and sisters, we will be moving forward with the second annual Black College and Consciousness Tour. We are moving forward with the second annual Black College and Consciousness Tour for 11 to 17 year old brothers and sisters. Okay, if you have a son, daughter, niece, nephew, young mentee that you're working with, male or female, the college tour is open to both our young brothers and our young sisters, male as well as female. If you are interested, you can go and register right now. The cost of the tour is 2000 US. That does not cover the entire fee. Dr. Umar Johnson is responsible for making up the balance of that tour. Okay, so it is more than 2000 but as a sacrifice and offering to our parents and our next generation, it is my responsibility to come up with the balance of that figure. And for those brothers and sisters who are out there who claim to be supporters of our children and our families and of Dr. Umar Johnson, I'm asking you to make a humble contribution to this year's second annual Black College and Consciousness Tour. You can go to Prince of Pan Africanism. Dot eventbrite.com. I repeat, Prince of Pan Africanism. Dot eventbrite.com. And of course, we spell Africa with a K. And if you go to Prince of Pan Africanism. Dot eventbrite.com, you can make a donation. We have to pay for books. We have to pay for t-shirts. We have to pay for the RBG wristbands, the RBG tiles. We have to pay for different types of ad hoc activities that come up while we are on the road. I have to pay for meals and you know how young people can eat. On top of that, we're gonna have more students I anticipate this year than we had last year. So if you wanna make a donation, then definitely please go to Prince of Pan Africanism dot eventbrite.com you can also go to dr umar johnson.com and click on the eventbrite link if you use the cell phone site on your cell phone then you want to click on who is dr umar johnson or services and scroll all the way to the bottom of the page where you can make a donation on eventbrite some of you have volunteered you said that you would cover the cost of an entire student the entire two thousand dollar fee okay less what i have to pay Okay, for those of you who offered to do that, please go to Eventbrite and do that. Type in your $2,000 donation, okay, and uh, let us have that. We can use that. If you can only offer $100, if you can offer $500, if you can offer $200, if you can offer 
$20, $50, $30, $10, whatever you can offer, brothers and sisters. We will be doing the same tour that we did last year. We're not going to do the second tour, the South tour, until next summer. So we will be going to the, the Malcolm and Betty Shabazz uh, Museum, which is the Audubon Ballroom, where Brother Malcolm was murdered, where Brother Malcolm was murdered on February 21st, 1965. We will be visiting that. Your children will learn the story of Malcolm X and Betty Shabazz. They will learn the story of the Audubon Ballroom. They will stand at the exact space where Brother Malcolm spoke when he took his last breath. So yes, brothers and sisters, they will see that. They will learn that. They will live that. We will go to the world-famous Apollo Theater. I repeat, we will go to the world-famous famous Apollo Theater and just like last year we will have our own amateur night at the Apollo everyone has to get on stage and engage in a certain type of a talent that they have and then we will go to Ferncliff Cemetery to pour libations at the grave of Malcolm X, Betty Shabazz, Paul Robeson, the late great Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad Oh, yes, we will pour libation at the graves of young Malcolm Shabazz, Dr. Yusuf ben Yakinen, and then we're going to go on up to Auburn, New York, and pay respect to the Queen Mother of Black Revolution. That is none other than Araminta Ross, a.k.a. Queen Mother General Harriet Tubman. We're going to go to the Harriet Tubman house in a Harriet Tubman grave site. Oh, yes, if you want your children to come, go to princeofpanafricanism.eventbrite.com right now and register. You have to pay $1,000 deposit, you must make a $1,000 deposit. The cost of the tour for you is $2,000. The cost of the tour for me is over $3,000, but the cost of the tour for you is $2,000, okay? And then I have to pay that extra $1,000 plus. We're going to visit the grave of Queen Mother Harriet. Pour libations at the grave of Queen Mother Harriet. We're going to go to the home where Queen Mother lived and take our picture there. And then we're going to go on over to Rochester, New York. That's right, to the big homie, the great, uncomparable, honorable Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey, my blood relative, my blood kinsman. Yes, indeed. I am not a descendant of Frederick Douglass. I am a kinsman to Frederick Douglass. I am a descendant of his half-brother and first cousin, Stephen Henry Bailey, the same Stephen that's mentioned in the Frederick Douglass narrative. So, yes, I am of the royal bloodline. Anyhow, brothers and sisters, we're going to go to the Harriet Tubman gravesite, and then we're going to come on down, and we're going to go to the Black African Holocaust Museum in Philadelphia. Philadelphia, the Black African Holocaust Museum in Philadelphia. It is the only, the only African Holocaust Museum in the United States dedicated to the struggle and the pain and the sacrifice of the Ma'afa that our ancestors were put through. So we will be going to the Black African Holocaust Museum in Philadelphia. And then we will go to Lincoln University and Cheney University, our two oldest HBCUs, Lincoln and Cheney. And of course, we call Lincoln University Pan-African University. Why do we call Lincoln University Pan-African University? Because both the great Kwame Nkrumah and the great Dr. Nanam Diazikawe, the liberator of Ghana and the liberator of Nigeria, both of those great Pan-African nationalists and Garveyites graduated from the Lincoln University. And then we will go to the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. We will go to Delaware State University. Delaware being one of the slave states that fought on side of Abraham Lincoln's Union during the Civil War. That's right. Some of y'all don't know that, but it was Abraham Lincoln was not opposed to slavery. He, in fact, allowed states to keep their slaves while participating in the Union cause. Missouri was a slave state. Delaware was a slave state. I believe Kentucky was a slave state. And Maryland, I believe as well, was a border state that fought with Abraham Lincoln to preserve the Union, not to end slavery. And your sons and daughters will learn all of that history this year during the second annual Dr. Umar Johnson, Frederick Douglass, Marcus Garvey, unapologetically African, black college and conscious in his tour. And then we will go on down to the Great Blacks and Wax Museum in Baltimore. We will go to the Reginald F. Lewis Museum in Baltimore. We will go to the Frederick Douglass Maritime Museum in Baltimore. We will go to the Baltimore Harbor. We will go to the Harriet Tubman Hometown Tour in Bucktown, Maryland. They will go to the place where Harriet Tubman was born. They will go 
to the store where it is believed that Harriet Tubman was hit upside her head by a slave master when she was still a young child. They will go to the home from whence Harriet Tubman snatched her mother and father from the yoke of white supremacy and slavery. They will go to the escape, the historic escape that uh, Queen Mother Harriet Tubman was able to enact to free her mother and her father. Oh yes, oh yes. And then we will go to Caroline County. They will go to the jail where Frederick Douglass was arrested the first time he tried to run away from slavery. They will go to the jail where Frederick Douglass was arrested, young Frederick Bailey, the first time that he tried to run away from slavery. Frederick tried to get his freedom three times. The first time it didn't work. The second time it didn't work. The third time he was finally successful. And then we will go to the Benjamin Banneker home. That's right, Benjamin Banneker, that bold black man, descendants of Africans, not descendants, not descendants of Asiatics, not descendants of aliens, not descendants of Americans, descendants of Africans. We will go to the home of Benjamin Banneker, who modernized the clock, designed D.C., designed Philadelphia, invented the almanac, who called Thomas Jefferson a hypocrite. How dare you say all men are created equal when you own over four? hundred of them yourself. How dare you, Thomas Jefferson, say all men are created equal when you own over 400 of them yourself. It's going to be powerful. The Black College and Consciousness Tour is going to be powerful. I did the first one last year, and I would say it was one of the greatest experiences in my life to get with our young people, to get with our young people, because we cannot wait until we have the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy to start preaching the good gospel of Garveyism. I said we can't wait until we have the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy to start preaching the good gospel of Garveyism, Prince Ifa Tunde, King Kong consciousness. It is my responsibility to raise the consciousness right now, brothers and sisters. So please make a donation or register your child or register your child and make a donation. It is all for one and it is one for all. Don't forget to make a donation to the school fundraiser at GoFundMe.com slash Dr. Uma. Oh yes, it's going to be powerful, brothers and sisters. It's going to be powerful. All right, and then... Because we now have the National Smithsonian Museum, the National Smithsonian Museum. Now the Prince of Pan-Africanism needs to work in the National African-American Museum for History and Culture. You know it's a joke. I know it's a joke. But we have to build the critical analyses of our young people. So I want to take them to the Smithsonian Museum to see if they can see what is wrong with it. I want to have them walk through it, experience it, and then on a ride to dinner, I want to ask them, what was it about this museum you thought was accurate? And what was it about this museum was inaccurate? Where are the subliminal messages? There were subliminal messages all through that museum. Unwritten, unspoken, but definitely communicated and present. And we're going to ask our boys and our girls, our princes and our princesses, what is it about this museum that you take an issue with? We got to build the critical analysis skills of black boys and girls. And then we're going to go to Bowie State University. We're going to go to Coppin State University. We're going to go to Morgan State University. And yes, we're going to go to the Black Mecca. That's right. The Black Mecca of HBCU's Howard University. Oh, yes, we're going to go to Howard University. Now, of course, we do have some concern about Howard University because Howard University has one of the largest populations of non-African American students. Howard University has one of the largest population of non-African American students. And it has been predicted that if Howard University doesn't do something quickly to rededicate itself to the education of African people, Howard University may go down in history as being the second historically black college that is no longer predominantly black. I said Howard University, if it doesn't stop bringing in an overwhelming amount of African people to study at Howard, it will go down in history as the second HBCU to no longer be predominantly black. The first HBCU to no longer be predominantly black is Bluefield State University in Bluefield, Kentucky. And y'all know I spoke, excuse me, Bluefield, West Virginia. Bluefield, West Virginia. And y'all know I spoke at Bluefield, West Virginia last year. Shout out to the family in West Virginia. The Prince of Pan-Africanism will be coming back because I didn't get a chance to visit the hometown of Booker T. Washington and the original hometown of the grandfather revolutionary Pan-African nationalism, Martin Delaney, who were born in Charleston, West Virginia. So I got to get on back. But Bluefield State in West Virginia, 
Bluefield State in West Virginia, a historically black college, is no longer historically black. It is now predominantly white. They are not only gentrifying the inner cities, they are gentrifying the HBCUs. Let me say it again. They are gentrifying the HBCUs. They are taking the historically black colleges away from black people. And we have to fight to resist that and fight to protest that and fight to overcome that. Oh, yes, we do. I don't hold responsible our rich blacks, our entertainers and athletes and super bourgeoisies for not bailing black folks out of our condition because we make enough money to bail our own selves out of our condition. But I do blame the rich blacks and the celebrity blacks for not adopting an HBCU. I hold them responsible for that. I don't hold them responsible for bailing you out. They shouldn't have to bail you out. You spent $2 billion on Ed Jordans last year. What the hell Jay-Z need to give you a check for? You just spent $4 billion on liquor and alcohol. What Oprah need to give you a check for? Y'all just spent $9 billion Billion dollars on weave and perm last year. What the hell does Sean Puffy Combs need to write a check to black folks for when you spending that type of money? They don't need to bail you out. You need to bail your own damn selves out. But what they do need to do is to adopt an HBCU. That's right, brothers and sisters. Every black celebrity needs to adopt an HBCU. Be Beyonce and Gian, uh, Beyonce and Jay Z. I respect them. I see what they're trying to do. I see Rock Nation, totally black infrastructure. Shout out to Jay Z. Shout out. He he doing what he can where he is. Beyonce with the Super Bowl tribute. I support my sister. Shout out to Beyonce for that. They can only do but so much where they are. They can't be as unapologetically African as Dr. Umar Johnson because they sit too close to the enemy. So we got to respect what contributions they can offer until they are at a position where they can totally execute the freedom financial, the financial freedom movement. We have to be at peace with them until they can totally execute the financial freedom movement for black folks. It is our job to bail ourselves out, but the celebrity blacks should be sponsoring an HBCU. Sean Puffy Combs went to Howard. Sponsor Howard Puff. Oprah Winfrey went to Tennessee State. Sponsor that. I believe J. Cole went to an HBCU. Sponsor that HBCU. Tony Braxton went to Bowie State. Sponsor Bowie State Tony Braxton. The brother Taraji P. Henson, I think, went to Howard. I think. Also, the brother who played the Black Panther. Okay, he also played James Brown. He also went to Howard. Sponsor your university. And I'm not sitting here to say that they're not, because some of them may actually be sponsoring their universities. Some of them may actually be sponsoring their universities. OK, but if they're not, we need them to sponsor the universities. So after we deal with Howard University and we go to the Benjamin Banneker home and we're going to go to everyone's place bookstore, everyone's place bookstore. Shout out to Brother Nati, everyone's books, everyone's place bookstore in Baltimore. We definitely going to uh, big up everyone's place and show them some love. We bought a lot of books there for the youth last year. We're going to do the same thing this year. And then we're going to go on down to Virginia State University. Hampton University, Norfolk State University, okay? I also, there's another HBCU in Virginia, I believe, as well, that I'm missing. We're going to have to hit them up as well. And then we're going to, this is 14 days and 14 nights, brothers and sisters. The Black College and Consciousness Tour Boot Camp. Make sure they got their swimming trunks, they flip-flops, okay? They deodorant, they personal needs, they feminine needs. 14 days, 14 nights. Everything is included. All you got to give them is spending money. Everything is included. All you got to do is give them spending money. We going to the movies. We going to the beach. We're going to have the pizza parties, the pool parties. We're going to Dorney Park and Great Adventures. Dorney Park is on me. Great Adventures, they got to earn it. They got to earn Great Adventures. I'm going to give them a test on everything they learned during the Black College and Consciousness Tour. They're going to be tested on Benjamin Banneker. They're going to be tested on the HBCUs. They're going to be tested on Malcolm and Betty Shabazz. They're going to be tested on Kyle. Muhammad. They're going to be tested on Dr. Yusuf bin Yaakim. Oh, yes. They're going to be tested on the Underground Railroad. Oh, yes. You got to earn that trip to Great Adventures because we go to Great Adventures on the last day. We go to Great Adventures on the last day, but we end the tour. Before we do Great Adventures, we got to go and pay respect to the grandfather of revolutionary warriorhood. We're going to pay respect to the grandfather of revolutionary black African warriorhood, and that is none other than the Honorable Reverend Nathaniel Turner. That's right, Nat Turner. 
We are ending the tour at Nat Turner Land, Drewryville, Virginia, so your children can see we're the most unapologetic of them all. We're the most unapologetic of them all, the Honorable Nat Turner, a preacher of the AME Church, Nat Turner stood up and rebelled against white supremacy. He said God told him to rise up and slay the oppressor with his own weapons. He said God told him to rise up and slay the oppressor with his own weapons. Oh, yes. So they're going to see where Nat Turner lived. They're going to see where Nat Turner died, where he was hanged. They're going to see the courthouse where Nat Turner was in prison. Oh, yes. They're going to see where the cabin once stood, where his wife, beautiful sister Cherry, and their daughter lived. Oh, Oh, yes, this is the Black College and Consciousness Tour. We producing unapologetically Africans here. That's all we producing. We ain't producing no Asiatics. We ain't producing no indigenous. We ain't producing no Native Americans, no aliens, and none of that. We producing A-F-R-I-K-A-N. And if you don't want your child to be an A-F-R-I-K-A-N, don't send them on my tour. Because this is only for those who bleed red. This is only for those who think black. And this is only for those who want to reclaim the green. I said this is only for those who bleed red. This is only for those who... Think black, and this is only for those who want to reclaim the green, brothers and sisters. Yes, this is the Prince of Pan-Africanism. I'm coming to you live, the Empire of Japan, Tokyo, Japan. Got to the airport yesterday. There was brothers and sisters there, Africans in Tokyo, who came up to the Prince of Pan-Africanism, didn't even know I was here. So I'm speaking tomorrow, Tokyo. I'm speaking tomorrow, and then Sunday I will be speaking in Nagoya, Okay, then I'm going to do some sightseeing in Nagoya. Today, I'm going to go visit some Buddhist temples because I'm real hype. I'm a psychologist, right? I'm a psychologist. And I consider Black Buddha, that nappy head master teacher, to be one of the greatest psychologists that we ever produced. And so I'm going to go visit the shrines of Black Buddha. I want to meditate at Black Buddha. I hope we ain't got a whole bunch of white Buddha statues. I hope we got some African-looking Buddha statues here in the Empire of Japan. So that's how we pop in, brothers and sisters sisters. Yes, indeed. So please donate, donate, donate. Go to principepanafricanism.eventbrite.com and donate. I apologize the other day, brothers and sisters, I didn't get a chance to do the Tuesday morning call before I left uh, for Asia. So please forgive me on that. Your brother's only human trying to do the best that I can do. You feel me? So we, we, we working on that. Brooklyn, June 2nd. Get your tickets. I want to see Staten Island, Long Island. I want to see Harlem, Bronx, Manhattan, Queens. I want everybody in Brooklyn. June 2nd, doors open up at 4 at the Brown Memorial Baptist Church power lecture from 6 to 9. I got a lot on my chest. Okay, I think I'm going to have to address these haters. I think in Brooklyn, I'm going to have to drop the Garvey grenade on these hating ass ho teppers who can't keep my name out their damn mouth. I think I'm going to have to do a who's who of Dr. Umar haters. That's right. A who's who of Dr. Umar haters in Brooklyn. I think I'm going to have to just because they don't know how to stop. You Negroes don't know how to stop. You got some elders hating too. I don't know what y'all hating for. You understand? Not most of you just just want to tour you, all right? I'm trying to be respectful because I'm your child. I respect the fact that I'm your child, but I'm only going to take but so much. Like Garvey was W.E.B. Du Bois's child. W.E.B. Du Bois was 20 years older than the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. W.E.B. Du Bois was 20 years older than the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. But I'm not going to keep taking this anti-Umar shit too long. And I'm a King Kong conscious, your ass. I don't care how old you is. Stop Hating. If you want the throne, come take it. I keep telling you, Negro. I'm outworking you. Forget the degrees. Forget the intellect. Forget the oratory. Forget the scholarship. I'm outworking you, Negroes. Y'all don't work. All y'all do is hustle consciousness. Nine out of every ten of you is a black power pimp. A black power pimp. And you mad at me because I'm putting work in. How many kids you kept out of special ed? How many black parents you saved? How many prisons you went into and helped out? How many superintendents call you up when they don't know what to do? How many suicide attempts you didn't stop? You understand me? Put the work in. I put the work in. So don't compare me to them. Negroes talking about, oh, he pimping. $20 a lecture. I'm pimping. Really? Do you know out of that, I got to pay venue, I got to pay insurance, I got to pay insurance, I got to pay my staff, I got to get my rent a car, my hotel, as well as my flights. Are you serious? Do you know when I come, 
across the waters to Africa and Asia. I do not charge. You understand? You're talking to a doctor here, not no hotel hustler. You're talking to a doctor. Six degrees count them, Negro. So you add up the hourly fee of a doctor of clinical psychology who's a school psychologist. So let's put that at 125 an hour. Let's put that at 125 an hour. I'm a lowball you. Now I want you to calculate all the time I spent in Africa. I want you to calculate all the time I spend in Asia, all the different countries. I want you to calculate the times I spend on my Tuesday morning call. Calculate all the free help. Calculate the National Independent Black Parent Associate. I want you to calculate that. And you don't even have to do 24 hours a day. Let's just do eight hours a day. Calculate my 125 professional wage and I'm lowballing you because with my credentials is 250 and up. I'm lowballing you. I'm lowballing it. And I want you to calculate that times the amount of time I put into our people and see if I'm coming up in the red or if I'm coming up in the blue. That's right, brothers and sisters. You can't begin to pay me for what I didn't done. You can't begin to calculate the time put in for Dr. Umar Johnson. So stop this shit. Stop the shit. Stop the shit. Okay? Cut it out. You, and it ain't about no compensation because this is about struggle, baby. I know this is sacrifice. I know this is sacrifice. I knew this was sacrifice before I got in it, family. I knew this was sacrifice. And guess what? I offer it gladly. If Malcolm could offer it, why can't I? If Mega could offer it, why can't I? Emmett Till could offer it, why can't I? Trayvon can offer it. Michael Brown could offer it. Sandra Bland could offer it. Eric Garner. Philando Castile can offer it. The nine brothers and sisters in that church in Charleston can offer it. I don't want no payment. I don't want no accolades. I don't want no thank you. You can't pay me for what I do. The best payment is to know I helped out a fellow African. The best payment is to know that I'm doing something to move my people forward. Marcus Garvey said we should never go to sleep without doing something to move our people forward. We got the National Independent Black Parent Association, 4th Regional Conference in Detroit, June 9th and 10th. I hope to see some of y'all there. Detroit, June 9th and 10th. I'm hoping to see some of y'all there because we got to organize. We got to organize. We just can't talk about this. We got to do the work. We got to do the work. You Negroes ho-tepping on my name. I've done more to save black children in the United States of America than all you black scholars, bougie and ho-teppers. Put together, I've done more. Put together, single-handedly, I have rescued the black community from the trappings of special ed. Single-handedly, by myself, I've rescued the black community from ADHD. Single-handedly, I have taught more black parents their rights than any scholar before me or living. Do the research. More than any scholar before me or living when it comes to the miseducation machine. Hell wrong with y'all. Compare me to them hustling ass black power pimps. Give me a break. But anyway, family, I'm loving it right now. I'm happy. I'm in Asia. Ancestors is with me. You understand? I got the Alekes. Don't leave home without them. You feel me? Keep the Alekes. Shout out to all the Orisha devotees. And, and, and let me say this real quick because and I'm going to have to do a video on this, but we got to handle this. Just because your religion borrowed aspects of African culture, don't make your religion African. Let me say this again. Just because your religion plagiarized or stole or borrowed aspects of African culture, that does not make your religion African. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with your religion. It don't make it bad. Okay? I respect all religions. I think they can all be used for good. But don't make your religion, don't try to say your religion is African because you plagiarize certain aspects of African culture. Now, I'm going to keep this real brief, but there's four essentials that you must meet in order for your religion to be African. And if your religion don't meet all four of these essentials, your religion is not African. Ashe? 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 So let me give you the four. Number one, in order for your religion to be an African religion, it must, it must, 
embrace the concept of both masculine and feminine divinity. If your religion does not embrace the concept of both masculine and feminine divinity, then it's not African, period. If your religion rejects the feminine principle of spirituality, then your religion is not African. I don't give a damn who you is. I don't give a damn who you is. African spirituality, African culture is based on the complementarity of opposites. The male and the female. God is not a man or a woman. God is not a he or she. But supreme consciousness is the manifester of both divine feminine and masculine energy. So in order for your religion to be African, it must embrace both the he and the she of metaph metaphysical divine energy. That's number one. That's number one. If your religion is all he or all she, it ain't African because there's no balance. And in order to be African, you must be balanced. In order to be African, you must be balanced. That's number one. Number two, in order for your religion to be African, it must embrace African divination. African divination. That is the belief that we are all born with a certain purpose and the only way, the only way to reach a higher consciousness of your purpose is to have the priests and priestesses divine for you. Call on the divine energies to open up your road so they can see what it is you need to be doing now to make sure you achieve your destiny. Prayer is important. Fasting is important. Okay? Religious deep thought is important. But in order for it to be African, it must embrace divination. It must embrace divination. Number three, in order for your religion to be African, it must embrace sacrifice. Sacrifice. All African spiritual systems, there must be the drawing of blood Occasionally, ashe, in order for you to reap greater ashe. In other words, you must give before you can get. There must be blood offerings. You must give before you can get. Dr. King died so you could vote. Frederick Douglass died so you could be free. Marcus Garvey died so Africa could be liberated. There is no such thing as freedom without a cost. There is no such thing as getting from God without giving to God. So if you don't have a balanced masculine and feminine principle, if you don't embrace blood offering, if you don't believe in divination, then your religion ain't African. Number four. Number four, in order for your religion to be African, it must teach. It must teach. It must teach that you have God within you and that understanding is better than unders. You must understand. You must reach the God that is already within you. African spirituality teaches that supreme consciousness takes up house in ourselves. So African consciousness is about the belief that you go inside to meet God. You don't have to go to the imam. You ain't got to go to the priest. You ain't got to go to the pastor. You got to do the inner work. You got to do the inner work. You have to access the God within. African culture believes that between us and God is a pantheon of spiritual energies that God created as a spiritual ladder. You know how you climb the ladder? You have to climb the ladder, you have to climb the ladder. Well, African spirituality teaches that there's a spiritual ladder that you have to climb in order to get to the great palace of supreme consciousness. And you ain't climbed that ladder yet. You ain't climbed that ladder yet. And let me give you one more. Let me give you one more. Bust it wide open. Let me bust it wide open with one. Let's bust it wide open. Bust this shit all wide open. Trying to wash your religion and African culture in order to legitimize and validate your religion. Uh-uh. Uh uh. In order for your religion to be African, it must ascribe to and embrace African ancestral veneration. Facts. Facts. In order for your religion to be African, it must ascribe to and embrace African 
ancestral veneration. That's right. We don't worship our ancestors. We venerate with our ancestors because we came from God through our ancestors. So any religion that does not teach you to build a relationship with your living dead, any religion that does not teach you to build a relationship with your living dead is not an African religion. That's right. We're taught that the ancestors sit at the feet of God. The ancestors sit at the feet of God. The ancestors sit at the feet of supreme consciousness by whatever name you choose to call it. Whether it's God, Allah, Jehovah, Chukwu, Amin Ra, Olu Dumare, Olurun. God sends the ancestors to intervene on behalf of their living descendants. If your religion does not honor our ancestors, if your religion does not pay homage to our ancestors, if your religion does not teach the children ancestral veneration, then your religion ain't African. Now you go intellectually masturbate that, you damn hater. I see you throwing shots. Keep coming for me. I'm going to air your ass out. I knew you'd been waiting. I knew you was going to come for me sooner or later. I knew you was going to come. You was itching, but I will King Kong your ass and the rest of them running with you. You ain't built for this. You ain't built for this. I stands my own ground. I don't need no team. I stands my own ground. I don't need no team. When you see Papa, you see Papa solo. I don't need nobody backing me up in order to manifest my God consciousness. I'm not you. Sit your weak ass down for I expose you. Facts. On that note, brothers and sisters. On that note. I'm going to go ahead and get dressed and get ready to go visit some of these Buddha temples, meditate, raise that consciousness. And what's the purpose of meditation, black man and woman? What's the purpose of meditation? The purpose of meditation is to quiet the mind long enough for you to reconnect to your God self. The purpose of meditation is to quiet the mind long enough for you to reconnect to your God self. Meditation is important because all day long we got nothing but chatter, chit chatter, fears, emotions, thoughts, ambitions, drives, guilt, depression, hurt, harm, expectation, lack of fulfilled agenda. The mind is running and running and running and running and running. And if you don't shut that mind down, it'll shut itself down. So meditation teaches you to stop mental activity long enough for your soul to forget that it is not mine, it is of God. Stop the mental chatter long enough for your soul to remember that it is not mine, it is God. Meditation is very important, brothers and sisters. You ever wonder why when you look at the kings and queens? Oh. Yes. Got you, queen. Give me five minutes. All right, I'll be downstairs. Okay, do me a favor. Check with them and see if that luggage showed up yet. Say again? Ask them if that luggage showed up yet, them two suitcases. Oh. All right, I'll see you down there. So the hostess is here, the queen is here. We're about to go do what we do. But I'm going to finish this late. I'm going to come on back. Okay, I'm going to come on back. I'm keeping it peaceful because I had my spiritual reading before I left. And the Iowa said, no conflict. The Iowa said, Doc, no conflict. The haters is trying to set you up to get you involved in some nut shit. No conflict. All right? So I'm trying to keep my Ogun energy to myself. I'm trying to keep that Ogun energy to myself. But I want to thank all those who've been riding with Dr. Umar through the years. I want to thank all of those who never spoke a negative word. I want to thank all of those who've been supporting me and sending me the messages and that whole thing. You understand me? But we just getting started. If they hate it now, where we about to go, they can't get there. Where we about to take the race, they can't get there. We just getting started, baby. This was practice. I've been practicing for seven years. I've been practicing. I've been practicing. I've just been sparring with these haters. Now we're about to go gangsta Garvey on them. You feel me? And I need y'all to ride with me because it ain't about me. It's about we. It's positive vibrations in 2017. Unify or die. Pan-Africanism or perish. Tokyo, let's get it. Nagoya, let's get it. Shanghai, China. Beijing, China. Let's get it. The prince is here.